So you just got your third badge in Run and Run, which means things are about to get real. Norman Split is where two of the most unfair fights in the early game can end just about any run if you don't play absolutely perfectly. The first real rival fight of the game on Cycling Road is such a run killer sometimes, especially on Turtwig runs. To start things off, the level cap jumps three levels from 35 to 38, giving you access to a few evolutions. All three starters are available at level 36, as well as Seismitoad, Karakosta, Hatterene, Gardevoir, Alakazam, and Mianxiao, for example. First, though, it's important to talk about Cycling Road and some of the tough trainers that occupy this part of the game. Screen Setters, an Arena Trap Dug Trio, Defiant Braviary, and this Guts Raticate can all be tricky to prep for, and some boxes have a tough time with some of these fights. Triathlete Abigail is the first tough trainer, but the most important part of this fight is routing it so that Dug Trio comes in on a mon that's able to switch out of its Arena Trap, like Talonflame or Vivion. Remember, if the AI sees a fast kill with a mon, it'll always send in that Pokemon. And of course, Flying types can switch out of Arena Trap. Triathlete Anthony is honestly pretty simple. Just make sure Braviary sees a guaranteed KO and swap into something that can handle it. But make sure not to use an Intimidate Mon because we've all made that mistake before. Triathlete Benjamin is in my opinion the most threatening regular trainer on Cycling Road, and it's pretty much entirely because of this Raticate. Using something like Togedemaru or a Hisui Arcanine for the Unpheasant can perfectly set up the Raticate to use Stomping Tantrum before the burn takes effect, giving you almost a free switch into something like Karakosta or something else that can outspeed and KO it. Trust me, Karakosta takes a surprisingly little amount of damage from non-burn stomping tantrum. The rest of the route is pretty simple. Just don't get tricked by Zoroark like Moxie, and it should be smooth sailing the Cycling Road Rival where the real threats await. Depending on what starter you pick, obviously this fight is completely different. I've run all three starters myself, but I'm way more familiar with the Torterra route than the other two. First off, the Ndidi can be a real problem. It sets up permanent psychic terrain for this fight, meaning you can't use any priority moves, with a small exception that we'll get to later. Stuff like Boltoned and good Floatzels can just outspeed and KO with Crunch, but it can be pretty tough to find something to just outright take it otherwise. In most situations, the best strategy is to lead something that doesn't die to Expanding Force or Hyper Voice and spam Brick Break. The AI really likes to click screens if they aren't up, and sometimes it doesn't even go for an attacking move. The Blaziken is a real problem. There is pretty much nothing in the game at this point that beats this thing without any risk. You are almost always dodging a crit, and it honestly just really sucks. Stuff like Musharna, Hatterene, Quillfish, Kingdra, and a few others can do this successfully, however. Oh, and Jolly Talonflame with the right speed IV can outspeed after plus one speed boost. The Kingdra can be a bit problematic. Sniper crits really hurt, but any attack drop into Torterra makes it a pretty non-threatening Pokemon. I like using Wall Rain to charm it so Torterra can finish it off, but stuff like Serena and Clawitzer with Terrain Pulls can take care of it as well. From my experience, KOing Kingdra with Torterra perfectly sets up Serena to come in for a triple axel, which gives pretty good leverage to bring in something like Togedemaru for Chip, a fire type to KO it, or Talonflame the fish for a flame body proc. Depending on your Talonflame, you can chain a Serena KO into landing a potential Will-O-Wisp on Weavile, but that could be kind of risky sometimes. Mons like Solid Rock Karakosta and Thick Fat Hariyama are also really solid checks to the Weavile though, both of which are pretty common Pokemon. Lastly, most Steel types just beat the Alcremie, honestly. Togedemaru and Kaparaja are both great answers, along with some poison types if they aren't too threatened by stored power. I guess you could say the Alcremie is... a piece of cake. Please laugh, please, 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 I'm begging you, please laugh, please, please, please. <laughs> There's a lot of overlap in these rival fights, so we can just start with Empoleon's rival, Sceptile. Like Blaziken, this guy's also a pretty big threat. Stuff like Masquerine, Intimidate Pivots, and Togedemaru can set up for somebody else to take care of it. Remember, nature power turns into psychic in Psychic Terrain. Although my favorite mod that I've seen counter this thing is Kaparaja, probably one of the most underrated Pokemon in the game in my opinion. Houndoom is an interesting one. A nerve can be annoying because switching something like Karakosta or Seismitoad in on a flamethrower becomes a little bit more dangerous since you can't remove the burn with a Ross Berry. Karakosta is definitely my favorite counter to it though, since clicking Protect on Power Herb Solar Beam completely negates it. As long as you're only dead to Solar Beam, you can always just attack and alternate Protects as long as the Power Herb is gone. Halucha is a real threat sometimes. Remember when I said most priority moves don't work in Psychic Terrain? Well, Flying types aren't actually affected by Terrain, so stuff like Fake Out Cycling works really well on this bird. Togedemaru is the obvious choice. If you pivot between that and something like Masquerade or Vivion, it's not all too bad. If not, stuff like Ampharos, Musharna, and other bulky Psychic or Electric types can work just fine. Granbull can be tricky. It hits like a truck, and due to its Assault Vest, it doesn't just blow up to a special move. I've definitely used Roserade and Victory Bell for this dog before, but I honestly don't think it was riskless. Talonflame's solid if you can afford to get a Will-O-Wisp off on it, but otherwise it can be a little scary. Moving on to the Infernape rival, the Swampert can be a bit of a problem. Ludicolo and Abomasnow are the best answers, but not every box has a Ludicolo, and almost no boxes have an Abomasnow. You can throw a Grass-type at it if you want and probably risk a crit, 
Big P is usually pretty good at doing stuff like that. Alternatively, if you can switch in on an Avalanche, scaling Encore onto Wall Rain is a great choice as well. Lastly, Gardevoir can be checked by most Steel types, although you really need to be careful of Destiny Bond. Most of the fights from here back to Pebbleburg aren't too bad, but this Tailwind fight in particular can really test your double battle knowledge. If you remember from the Roxanne split video, which I'll link here and in the description below, double battles work on a slot by slot basis. I like leading Breloom here if I have it and switching into Caracosta on the guaranteed dual wing beat and ice punch. Make sure to give the turtle an Asper Berry so you can still click Protect if you get frozen. On the other side, make sure you have something that can safely KO the Crobat in Noivern without getting targeted itself. It's also worth mentioning that this Gorgeist Trick Room Trainer is a pain in the ass. Be really careful about the Lorantis, since it sees Leaf Storm and Superpower as setup moves and can click them if it doesn't see a guaranteed KO with something else. Altering Cave is home to the one and only encounter of this split, and it's full of some solid guys. Lucario is great for Norman, it can lead against the Porygon or 1v1 the Sinchino due to inner focus. Timber is also really solid, and Guts is generally the better of the two abilities between that and Sheer Force. Alolan Sandshrew is kind of underrated in my opinion, although I do think it's better if you get it in Granite Cave. It has a solid typing for walling or pivoting certain mons, but it especially pops off on a demonic fight on Flannery Split. Magnemite is great, Magnet Pull can obviously net you some more steel types, and Analytic makes it hit like a truck. I actually love getting Bergmite from here. It's practically a guaranteed check to Norman's Diggersby, which is arguably his most threatening mon. Avalog has insane defenses, and can wall pretty much anything physical that doesn't have super effective moves, and even some that do have super effective moves. Nummel and Torkoal are fine. They both really shine in Flannery Split, but they really don't do a ton for Norman or his gym trainers. Finally, Porygon's really the only miss of this cave in my opinion. It's kind of absolute garbage, and I haven't found a real niche use for it at this point. Maybe somebody in the comments can correct me in case I'm wrong. Finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, Petalburg Gym. This gym's pretty cool, because you get to choose the route you take and subsequently which trainers you fight. In my opinion, Speed Room Sharpedo, Accuracy Room Machamp, Defense Room Mudsdale, Crit Room Everything, Recoil Room Buffalant, and most of Strength Room are what you should be looking out for. It's important to try to choose your route based on your box, and if you don't have anything to counter a specific mon in one of the rooms, then it's best to try a different path. Rather than going over each trainer, I think it's better to outline which mons can take on which threats. Stuff like Hatterene or Musharna can check them a champ, and Torterra is really good for the rest of Accuracy Room. Funnily enough, Carnivine is fantastic for the defense room. Bro can take like 3 mons sometimes, it's actually kind of insane. Torterra is really good for Crit Room, just make sure you have a way to deal with the Inteleon. Rhyperior, Avalug, and other really bulky mons are solid for Bufalant. Just be careful of reversal damage. And finally, if your box has Caracosta, it's worth checking out the Strength Room. Most of that fight revolves around being able to safely beat the Slacking. It's time for Daddy Norman. I think this is actually my least favorite fight in the game. It's honestly so difficult, and sometimes it really feels like there's no answer to some of these guys. Eevee Light Porygon 2, Huge Power Azumarill, and Huge Power Buffed Diggersby, Meloetta, King's Rock, Skill Link Sinchino, and Mega Pidgeot. This fight is insane, and it's such a gatekeeper for the end of early game. Fast fighting types like Infernape, Mian Xiao, and Lucario can all handle Porygon, as well as stuff like Tentacruel and Clawitzer. Just don't get truck attacked and equip a Cherry Berry, and you should be alright. Azumarill can get checked by stuff like Quillfish, Torterra, Victory Bell, Sorina, and Roserade, and sometimes you can even make sure you guarantee it to click Aqua Jet if it sees it can kill you, and it's slower. Diggersby is where things get really tough. Torterra can beat it with an asterisk next to that. Foul Play often deals too much damage to outheal it with Synthesis, and because of how Foul Play works, you can't really intimidate Cycle it. The best answers I found are Cloyster, Avalug, Staraptor, sometimes, and my personal favorite, Gastro Acid Electros after coming in on an Earthquake. Meloetta is tricky. If it doesn't see a kill with anything, it's always going to prioritize clicking Relic Song so it can change forms. Torterra can 1v1 it by spamming Synthesis on close combats, then finishing it once its defenses are low enough. Alternatively, stuff like Masquerine and Yanmega, or a bulky Psychic type can take care of it as well. This stupid rat, by the way, I hate this thing with such a burning passion. If you didn't know, holding a King's Rock gives any move you use a 10% chance to flinch. Combine that with Skill Link, 50% chance to flinch with any 5-hit move. Any mon that's slower without inner focus just risks 50% flinches always, and it's almost never safe to 1v1 this thing. The best counter for this rodent is definitely Togedemaru. Iron Barbs absolutely annihilates this thing. You can also use stuff like Lucario and Mudsdale as long as it has inner focus, or Eldegoss to drop its speed by 5 to allow something else to safely KO. Lastly, the Pidgeot is quite the box check. There aren't a ton of answers to this bird, but Hisui Arcanine, Aurorus, Empoleon, and Toxtricity are some of the best answers I can find. If you're willing to sack something, you can beat it with most bulky electric types, but obviously sacking isn't always what you want. Hopefully everybody enjoyed this video, and make sure to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe if you want more Run and Bun content. Also, follow me over on Twitch if you want to see Run and Bun attempts live pretty much every single day. Till next time, everyone.